So, very good. Are we running? Yes. We're taking? <gasps> It's live! <laughs> Welcome to Scotland, Matthias. Thank you! Thank How are you? you? I'm good, uh, slightly jet lagged, where it's one hour time difference. Just kidding. Yes, um, yeah, I'm good. It's yeah. good to be here. So, you were uh, originally a drummer? Yes, uh, I started out as a drummer when I was uh, six years old, and I've always been drumming on myself. Yeah. Uh, different parts of my body, some that we should speak about, uh, have different sounds, uh, depending <laughs> on. What I've been eating, they sound pretty different. And today I had some strange KLM cookies, so... So yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a drummer. It's just really hard, as I like to put it, to write uh, decent songs on a, on a cymbal or a hi-hat. And someone's calling, good lord, <laughs> cell phone inferno. Yes. So how then did you become the world's foremost freak guitar player? Um, well, it was uh, it was pretty much like that, that I... I well, first of all, my, my teenage ego was uh, seriously injured when I uh, did a super duper drum solo in front of many schools in, uh, at the age of 13. And I walked off and I thought I would be the most popular chap on the planet and nobody noticed it was me because I was behind the drums. So I needed to get up front. And also, uh, as I said, it's really hard to write uh, melodies on drums and everything. So I went to uh, Iron Maiden with a friend, a uh, twin. Uh, sort of harmony crazy for a while and then he dropped out and I continued with my strange playing and it got more and more weird. I locked myself up in my teenage room <laughs> and spent 10 hours every day just practicing my brains out and trying to find out uh, who, who I was and who I am and why do I sound the way I do and how can I make it sound even more like myself, yeah. you know. Listening back to myself and hearing, ah, this is obviously a Steve Eilick or Yngwie Malmsteen or Pat Matheny on your whatever. And, and you know, get it out and you know, try to refine yourself. So, I'm still working on it every day. So, yeah, so obviously, there are some of the people then who have influenced you. What about like you know, places and cultures? Because obviously, you've done some of the, the Indian yeah. and stuff. And what about that? How's that influenced you? Um, quite, quite a great deal. I've uh, lived on my music for believe it or not 25 years. It's amazing to survive in show business that long. Uh, and I've traveled a lot and uh, I like to say that you know I like to play with my pants down but sometimes <laughs> I do but uh, I just just uh, absorb a lot of stuff and and uh, I, I uh, suffer a great deal of humiliation from time to time when I don't understand what some of the groovy people I um, I play with what, what they do and what they throw at me and it's like I don't get it I can sit in, in Chennai and clap hands with with kids and they, they completely, it doesn't matter if I have a signature model or signature pick or uh, whatever, uh, you know, in, in a place like Chennai, it doesn't really mean anything because I want to know what they know and I haven't got a clue at first. And then about a month when I, after I come back, I, I start to get it. Ah, bloody hell. Oh, this is crazy. And so on. And it's like, ah, I get it now. Can I go back, you know? So, and, but that's the only way to learn, you know, you can't spend your life in a, in a, in a bedroom with a stupid uh, pod and your headphones, you have to get out there, you know, uh, in real life and get dirty and learn and, and uh, again, make a fool out of yourself. It's quite refreshing, actually. So. Uh, what's the writing process like uh, for you? I've heard that you're quite a perfectionist when it comes to writing and recording. Uh, well, the, the process of writing music is, is pretty much different uh, each and every time. Uh, I luckily have, have built, uh, I live in the isolated Swedish woods where nobody can hear a scream except for an occasional moose. And uh, I have my studio, uh, well, in my garden, it's a separate house. And what I do is basically I, I get my mad professor haircut up. Uh, I grab a serious cup of coffee and I might sit behind the drum kit or I might just play for a while on the guitar or on the, the sitter or the mandolin or keyboard or whatever and um, or song can start with the title or with a, uh, a sentence or a lick or a rhythm or whatever it's, it's really different every time you know there is for me there is no formula and when I discover unorthodox tonality or stuff that I'm not used to, I try to um, try to blend it in my music, in, in uh, not for the sake of it, but just to add some more uh, flavors. Yeah. You know, obviously I'm I'm not an Indian guy, uh, but uh, I steal bits and pieces that I find really interesting, and I turn it into some kind of Swedish 
Indian heavy metal music, you know, that's that's my own, you know, it's about growing your own moustache, as yeah. I like to put it. So Yeah. <laughs> so you you mentioned before that you've you've travelled the world a lot, you've been in a lot of different places. Yeah. Uh, what's that lifestyle like for you? That travelling on the road? Yeah, well it's it's uh, I mean, I'm I'm a, an old fart, so I'm a dinosaur, so <laughs> I'm I'm forty four years old and I've been doing it since I was nineteen and uh, of course, you know the traveling itself is, is sometimes exhausting. I remember one trip I did, that was last year uh, or two years ago, uh, I went to 28 countries in one year, that's my personal record, and I never want to do that again. Uh, and in one trip I, I went to Germany and then to, I think it was Dubai or Abu Dhabi, and then to Australia, and then to Indonesia, and then off to China, and then off to Kathmandu in Nepal after that. And it was just one really, really, really long, um, round trip with different time zones every day and, and uh, you turn into a zombie uh, as it is anyway even if you don't do sex drugs and whatever you know mm -hmm. so but the actual playing wherever it is on the planet is the reward you know the many 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 miles and hours and months you spend in an airplane you know but but then again i'm super duper happy i can do it you know and be a family provider just by bending strings and, and playing strange combination of notes so I'm, I'm very grateful thank you thank you yes yes um, but it is exhausting every from time to time so yeah but would you change it no no way but but I've, I've been around this tiny planet that we live in uh, live on uh, um, so many times you know I've, I've been to every possible strange place and uh, I, I, I like to play where nobody else is playing. If someone says, hey, come to Borneo, do a strange concert, sure, absolutely. You know, it doesn't have to be the major European or, or North American cities. You know, I'd be happy to to, to go wherever, you know. Yeah. So, um, Why sure? <laughs> anything's cool. I've, Nepal is one of my favorite places. Nepal and India, yeah. I'd like to go back as often as I can. I really dig it. So, yeah. Cool. Um, so, obviously, you know, you've, you've played music with a lot of different people. Yeah. Um, what's the story behind meeting and then collaborating with bass maestro Jonas Helberg? Well, uh, Jonas, many years ago, he phoned me up one day. He, uh, as I told you in the car, he um, he was after playing with John McLaughlin and, and Sean Lane, two fabulous guitar players. He said, "I don't want to work with any guitar player again." Uh, but then we bumped into one another in Stockholm at a drum and bass festival that our drummer in Free Kitchen was doing and he said, well, this guy is weird enough. I think I'll give him a ring. And he said, hello, I'm Joan Selborn and uh, would you like to tag along with me to India for three and a half uh, weeks? Um, and I said, of course, of course, you know, because I was a, a big fan and I know he was a radical man and I know I was going to learn a lot as well. So Jonas is pretty much like my, my big brother and he introduced me to a lot of fabulous people and, and musicians and uh, we just released a new album called Art Metal with um, the, the title is The Jazz Raj consisting of two plus 30 minute tracks based on Indian um, tonality, Indian ragas that we turned into western uh, you know with chords and tonality and everything. It's a mighty um, beefy album but we're shit proud about it and we hope to uh, to bring it to Scotland eventually. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's great. Jonas yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a fabulous dude. I like you, Jonas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, also with Jonas, um, I just want you to talk about performing Beethoven's Triple Concerto with yes. Jonas and the was it the Vesperis Chamber Orchestra? Yeah, I was I, I was Vesteros. Yeah, it was a symphonietta, um, like a smaller symphony orchestra. But it was it was great. Jonas would phone me up. In the middle of the night, when we we rehearsed, and said, how this page in the, in the you know in the score? How, how the hell do you do that? And I have to invent new playing styles because he was playing the cello part on electric bass, and I was playing the violin part on electric guitar, and it's it was really really hard. And some of the hardest things were not uh, only from a technical point of view, you know, uh, but to play slow enough. The the largo, the the mid piece in in the concerto it was uh, so slow it was almost stopping and I was looking you know the conductor please come on let's move to the next 30 second note and the 30 seconds <laughs> note were so slow you know and then you had 16th note triplets and it was the you had to wait for it. and that was really hard 
for a heavy metal bastard like myself. And um, uh, even Steve I, uh, the good man, sent me an email before saying, you know, good luck following the conductor. I was so longing for uh, to have Phil Rudd from ACDC just playing hi hat. Yeah, that would be great to do. All right. <laughs> that would be great, but no. So that was great. We'll, we'll do it again eventually. Uh, we have the concert recorded, uh, but time is the enemy, and, and I always want to move on, and so does Jonas. So uh, now I'm in the midst of, of uh, uh, or at the end of wrapping up uh, the new Free Kitchen album as well. So I will, uh, yes, we'll do it. We'll do it when we when we retire. Yeah. Whatever, you know, so, uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, you mentioned earlier on about growing your own moustache. Yes. Could you tell the viewers about yes. how they might grow their own moustache? Yeah, it's not about facial hair, as you probably um, have figured out. You can be a 10-year-old girl or a parrot or a squirrel, whatever, and have a perfectly fine moustache. Um, it's about having something to say and be brave enough to say it and, and uh, sort of refine who you are and, and try to get that through in your playing or if you play tennis or it doesn't matter but but again as much as possible be true to yourself and so that's about it's better to grow your own moustache than you know growing somebody else's and learning every little lick from every little player because then you will just disappear into nothingness you know and, and there are always four million other places that will do it better you know so but if you have your own moustache you have your own unique fingerprints and sound you're, you're untouchable, you know, so and life is more fun with your yeah. own moustache as well, you know, so yes, grow it, grow it, coming back to check you out, yes. <laughs> um, so what's in store tomorrow? You're doing a clinic for Wish of Guitar Lessons, Yeah. Um, a free guitar clinic, so what can we expect? Um, everything, <laughs> you can expect everything. Now I will, um, I always improvise and, and check out what, what they might uh, need, the people who will show up. But um, I'm going to speak a lot about rhythm, I'm going to speak about uh, unorthodox tonality, uh, I'm going to show how to make the guitar sound like anything but a guitar without any effects or whatever, and um, um, try to, you know, bring some positive attitude uh, through, because it's a tricky planet to live on, but you can actually have a tip-top life if you grow your own moustache and, uh, <laughs> and, and frame your life with, with good stuff. So. Uh, Try to bring a bit of optimism, uh, and uh, well, we're gonna do some nasty hand clapping and some uh, shredding, and uh, you know, freak style. So yeah. yeah, nothing's gonna be the same. In the wish all after this, <laughs> you wish you will never, you know, whatever. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So is um, the you know your freak guitar clinic? Mm -hmm. Is that the sort of condensed version of what people can expect at the freak guitar camp? Yeah, a little bit. It's it's like a, a chunk of of uh, Matthias Lightland, you know, in an afternoon. Um, the Free Guitar Camp is my annual camp. I've been doing it for this summer. It's the fifteenth summer in a row, and it's my favorite time of the year. I uh, I sit in my guru chair, which which is uh, slightly um, higher than everybody else's chair, so so I can you know for my ego boost and everything. Uh, but basically, you have to get your shit together, and I like that. I. I have to move on and come up with new stuff and you know share experiences and I also get a lot back from from campers as well. So I sit in my sit on my guru chair for six days and clap hands and play like crazy and uh, uh, we speak about this and that and, and share uh, weird stuff and and it's a great mix of people from from all of the world, every possible culture and, and religion and, and nationality whatever. And then I do another six days uh, with a new group, and and it's it's great. Um, I uh, I'm deeply grateful. I'm actually actually I can actually pull it off uh, because it's yeah it's a tip top time, and I learn so much as much as myself. It's like cleansing a bit, you know, each year. So what can we do, you know? So yeah, yeah it's great. Cool. Yeah. Um, could you talk about your true temperament system that you're yes. featuring on your latest yes. Harrison guitar? Yeah, it's a. Uh, a word of warning, when you try it, there is no way back, you know, you realize how much straight, regular frets, um, how much they suck. Uh, I tried it for the first time uh, when we rehearsed Beethoven's Triple Concerto. Uh, I had my first true temperament guitar, uh, what, what year is it, 2014, <laughs> that was six years ago. And, and I looked at it, it's like, oh good God, I can't play this, you know, I've been rehearsing 
the concerto for, for eight months, you know, um, with straight frets. I picked it up and there's a video called Warming Up for Beethoven. It was sneak filmed. I didn't know I was being filmed. Where I tried it out for the first time and I'm just, I'm, I'm flabbergasted because I've always been super annoyed by the, the lousy intonation of the guitar itself. You know, it's, it's completely wrong in so many ways. You can tune it on one fret and you move it half step up and it's completely screwed up, you know. Some people say, well, it's in the nature of the guitar itself. It should be slightly out of tune and it's rock and roll. Well, I think it's like, yeah, I'd just like to drive with three tires on my car, you know. It's, if you can make something better, why not? And uh, it's a brilliant Swedish invention, and I have it now. Uh, all my guitars refretted, even my acoustic uh, Alhambra guitar. And playing a nylon string Alhambra guitar, you can see it in the Hell Spells uh, cover video on, on YouTube. Uh, but to have a nylon string true temperament fretted guitar, it's, it's just insane, you know, because that's even worse than an electric guitar when it comes to tuning. So it's Perfect um, pitch in, in every possible position and it's divine. Check it out, boys and girls. It's really good for you. You will sound so good. Yes. <laughs> so it's a bit expensive, but it's good. You know, so yeah. I'm indoors though. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, cool. So and um, what about the, the new Freak Kitchen album that's yeah. coming out this year? Yeah. It's called Cooking with Pagans, uh, appropriate title for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> um, we we're going to call it Wi-Fi for Pagans at first, but uh, uh, apparently there was some problem with uh, using Wi-Fi in the trademark bullshit today. Uh, so also we said, well, Cooking with Pagans, and I had an idea of um, our heads uh, chopped off um, and, <laughs> and being held by, we have this stupid cow logo, so the cow sort of, but we're really happy with the, the decapitated it's uh, being cooked on the, you know, big, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a chunky, freaky um, rock album with uh, 12 tracks, uh, and I'm really happy with it. I think it, for the first time we actually captured how we, how we sound, because it's, it's not overproduced in any way. It's, a lot of the times it's just one guitar and bass and, and drums. So, um, and I like it. I, my sore throat indicates that I'm uh, singing a lot these days and um, I have four more songs to go and then straight into with the vocals and then straight into mixing and mastering and then we'll just get it out. We have a great video in the works as well um, for a tune uh, that's going to be uh, animated by a former uh, Disney um, animator, uh, Juancho Guardino. Uh, Guarnido, and he's also the uh, author of um, uh, and the artist behind Black Sad, uh, a pretty popular, uh, lovely um, adult comics. Uh, and I was floored when he uh, dropped me an email one day and said, Listen, I'm uh, Juancho, and uh, I really like what you're doing uh, with Free Kitchen, and uh, I'd like to send you some of my stuff. And I saw it and I was like, holy shit, you have to do the artwork. And then he said, well, let's also make an animated video where we actually, uh, you know, draw frame by frame. It's a very painstaking thing. So, but it's going to happen and it's going to have a premiere in, uh, in San Diego, I think, at the Comic Con. So lots of good stuff in, in the works. So, yeah. yeah. Cooking with Pagans coming to not a record store close to you because there are no record <laughs> stores anymore. But it's going to be out. Um, as soon as we possibly can, possibly before summer, so, yeah. Yeah, so what other um, exciting plans do you have for the immediate future? Yeah, well, it's to get the Free Kitchen album out and um, tour with that, uh, Free Guitar Camp, tour with uh, Jonas um, as well, then I have, I uh, can't really speak about that on camera yet, but I have a new uh, splendid instrument on the way, um, that I will uh, create nasty music on. Um, uh, that's that's a promise. Uh, so, but I think for the rest of this year and the entire next year is going to be uh, lots of playing out there. Um, so, stay alert, stay freaky, and I will be in, in your bedroom or whatever performing <laughs> sooner than you think. So, yeah, it's it's going to be lots of gigs. So, yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you, thank you. Shall we go and get some Italian food? Italian food! Quattro formaggi pizza! Okay, that's <laughs> an end. Alright, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.